Next, we will have a speaker who empowers the world one picture at a time. Please welcome Ms. Stephanie Calabrese. Hello. Hi, um, I'm really thankful to be here um, and I'm incredibly impressed with these two ladies. So you guys did an awesome job. Um, it was really great, very impressive. Um, I'm really happy to be here and I wanna talk to you about ways in which we can work together to build a better world, one picture at a time. And I wanna start by just um, revealing the fact that there are 350 million pictures posted on Facebook every single day. There are 60 million pictures posted in Instagram. And I can't help but wonder, um, what are we sharing? What are we posting? Well, there's a lot of this. And don't get me wrong, I love lattes. I love found hearts. But does this picture really have a purpose? I think together, if we think about ways in which we can use our pictures and our words together, there's an incredible opportunity to share the stories of our lives as they unfold. We all have smartphones with cameras, um, and we have social media as a way to share our images. So what do I mean by a better world? Um, I mean more honesty and less superficiality. I mean more open minds and less judgment. I mean more compassion and less hate, or even worse, indifference, when we don't really care. So as I look through my Facebook feeds, I can't help but wonder, um, where is this stuff, right? What are we sharing with one another? Well, I think we have a great opportunity to share our stories. And when I say stories, I mean our pictures and our words. And um, it really starts with you. I don't know you, I don't know anything about your life, I don't know where you're from, I don't know uh, your best memory, I don't know your biggest fear, but I do know that you have an incredible life story in the making, and there's a lot that I can learn from you, there's a lot that the world can learn from you, um, if you share those stories, and if you really share them in a very honest and truthful and genuine way. So I, when I started to do this, when I started to share my own stories in the form of pictures and words, it changed everything for me. And I thought I would start by sharing some of my stories with you tonight. So this is me. Um, my mother died 13 years ago, and she left me with her fine china and her mother's diamond brooch and these pictures. And nothing means more to me than these pictures. I remember her telling me that I would um, when I first learned to walk, I would make my way to the front door and just stand by this door and look out the window. Um, and there are actually a lot of pictures of this. But I had forgotten that memory. And when I found these pictures, it just reminded me that our pictures have purpose. I first began to get excited about the world when I would sit in my library in Saddlebrook, New Jersey at my school, and I would pour over these National Geographic magazines. Um, I remember I had about an hour, I don't know, maybe an hour um, to be in the library, and I would just sit and look at all of these pictures. And what it said to me was there's an incredible diversity of people in this world. And I went to school with a lot of white people. Everyone pretty much looked like me. I didn't get out much. We didn't travel a lot when I was a kid. But these pictures gave me a window into the um, incredible diversity in the world. And when I looked at these pictures, I realized, gosh, you know, the world is an amazing place. And I want to go beyond the boundaries um, that I have set for myself right now. So pictures have purpose. I first began to get excited about photography at the age of eight. Um, I got a little Kodak camera in my stocking for Christmas, and um, I started walking around with this camera. It had a wrist strap and that it stayed on my wrist, um, and I would take it to school, and I would make pictures of my friends. And photography was a way for me to connect with people. Um, I've always been fascinated with people and the ways in which each of us are so different and incredibly unique. And it gave me an opportunity to focus on people and to get close to them and to ask them questions. Um, and it was a way for me to um, live in the fascination of that. 
um, through my pictures. And I would save up my allowance money, and when I got enough, I would order double prints. Back then, we used to have to send our film off to be developed and get prints. And I would get double prints. I would hand one picture to my friend, and I would keep the other, because I wanted my friends to see um, how much I valued their uniqueness. I wanted, to see, wanted them to see what they looked like in, in my eyes. Pictures have purpose. So when we think about this notion of building a better world, it's a big concept and it seems almost impossible, but I wanna break that down into sort of five key ways in which um, you can think about doing that through your pictures. And I wanna start with this idea of looking beneath the surface of things. I lived here. Now when you look at this image, what comes to mind? You might think I was poor, you might think that I didn't have enough. And the reality is, um, I didn't. I wanted more. I had a big fancy job. I was making a great salary. Um, I was ready to move up to a bigger and better house. And uh, I thought to myself, you know, if I get this bigger house, people will look at my house, the facade, and they'll think of me in a much more favorable or better way. And um, so I did that. What I realized when I got that bigger and better house was that I got lost in it. I got lost in the surface of what that bigger and better house looked like. And I turned back to my camera. Um, digital photography had just sort of um, come into being. And um, working with my camera, I started a, pre a project 365 on January 1st, 2008. And I took this project. Um, to, I shot pictures every single day, and that was back before um, our camera phone. So I hauled a big SLR camera with me in my backpack, and I would just move through the day and promise myself that I would make at least one picture every single day. And um, what was significant about that experience for me is that it really taught me to see again. I began to notice things, uh, the beauty that you can find in messy hair and small fingers. And I turned to nature. Um, I was able to just sort of move around my yard and um, focus, get really close, and get under the surface of things. And when I did that, I realized that um, there's so much wisdom in nature. And if we move in close and take time to get below that superficial cursory glance at things, we can find out that um, things change, life changes, and that we need periods of time where um, we grow uh, and we need periods of dormancy like winter and spring comes in its own time. You can't rush growth. I also turned to the people in my life who were very close to me. Um, this is Imogene Johnson. Jean was our nanny and Jean took care of my children while I worked uh, to help pay for this bigger and better house. And um, Jean Johnson and I had an awesome friendship and a good relationship. She was super stubborn, um, and she took care of things for me. She took care of my children. She took care of our house, and um, I learned a lot from Jean. So it was very natural for me to begin exploring the world of documentary photography inside of Jean's house. Now, Jean didn't live in a big and uh, better house like mine. Um, and she didn't want that, she never did, and I admired that so much about her. And I remember standing with her in her home, and one of the things that um, hit me was that, you know, the value of a human being has absolutely nothing to do with material wealth. And I could see that standing in this doorway, and I could see that in the way that she took care of this collection of stray cats that would um, arrive at her door. Pictures have purpose. The second thing I want you to think about as you move through life with this camera that's always with you is the idea of going beyond your boundaries or the limits that you've set for yourself. This is me and my friend Jen Lemon. Uh, a year after I started that Project 365, we entered a photography competition called Name Your Dream Assignment. And with that photography competition, uh, we put together a project called Picture Hope. And we wanted to go out into the world and seek out these hidden stories of hope in seemingly hopeless places. 
Um, and we won that competition. We won $50,000 um, to travel to places like Rwanda and Tanzania and Nepal. And you might think that this was a very natural thing for me, but it wasn't. I was very scared. I'd never been to a developing country. Um, I didn't know the people I would meet. We would be staying in people's homes. Um, yeah, I was really scared. I didn't know what to pack in my suitcase. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't even know if my photography skills were good enough to do this project justice. But I went anyway. And people in the world will tell you that uh, in developing countries there is a lot of poverty. And I will tell you firsthand, and these pictures don't lie, there is incredible wealth in these places. And it's very easy for us to see pictures of people living in very challenged circumstances and to get a visual of what we think poverty looks like. And um, the reality is there's a ton of wealth and wealth is not always tied to material assets. So we had a wonderful opportunity to meet with survivors, change makers, inspiring entrepreneurs, mothers, and kids just like ours. And what amazed me, maybe I knew this the whole time, I'm not sure, maybe it took me to actually go to a very far away place to realize that we're basically all the same. We also met some incredible friends. We met some incredible friends, and uh, it was very clear to me that material wealth um, does not shape a human being. So the third thing I want you to think about is revealing what is true and being very genuine and authentic in what you're sharing with the world. So in traveling to these incredible places, we did find a lot of hope, but that was not uh, without a view of, um, of tragedy and things that looked incredibly difficult. This is in Kathmandu, Nepal. And in these communities, um, there are children living with their families in these communities. Um, it's a difficult place to be in the rainy seasons. The river comes up and it floods the community. And a lot of these kids are not able to go to school for days at a time. This is my friend, Renu. She started a school called Caselli School for many of these children, which served as a second home for them. And I had an awesome opportunity to spend time with these children, teaching them how to make their own pictures um, of their own families and their own homes. And um, it was an awesome experience. We used all mobile cameras uh, that were donated by um, my Twitter followers. Um, and the children were able to um, capture a bit of their own lives. Pictures have purpose. These are example images that some of the children took. And I think what was amazing to me was the fact that they pointed their lens on their friends, on the people in their lives, and not the things that they collect in their homes. The fourth thing I want you to think about is um, ways in which you can expose your heart to the world through your pictures. When we traveled to um, Nepal, we spent some time in Pokhara, and it's very much a tourist or trekking destination. And we were staying with our friend Sabi in her family's home, and right next door to this home, there was a restaurant. And these children were right outside the restaurant, and they were washing dishes with a hose and a bucket. And um, we were intrigued by the girls and walked over, and um, of course, we couldn't talk with them. We couldn't share a language. Um, but we took their pictures and we made videos with our iPhones and shared that with the kids and they were enjoying it. They enjoyed seeing themselves and they were laughing and it was a joy for us to be um, with them experiencing that. Um, but I asked my friend Sabi, you know, what are these kids doing? Like, why are they here? And I learned that these girls were sent away from their homes um, to find a place to live and to work as a means of survival. And I followed this one particular girl. Um, I just felt a connection with her and photographed her 
while she was working. And one of the things that was difficult to see is that this girl did not get to go to school. And she didn't have to tell me that. I could tell that she longed to go. I could see that in the pictures. I remember leaving Nepal and I was um, pretty distraught um, seeing these children, particularly these children working outside of the restaurant. Um, I, I wondered what, what could I possibly do? How can I see these experiences and not make a difference in their life in some way? And um, I began to think about things like, um, you know, questioning myself as a photographer. So I sent a note to my friend Sabi and said, Sabi, you know, what can we do? Can I send money for this girl? I want her to go to school. Like, what, what can I possibly do to help the situation? And my friend Sabi, in all of her incredible wisdom, said, Stephanie, there's nothing to be done right now. Uh, I'll talk to my family about it, and I'll let you know if there's something that you can do. And we didn't talk about it again. Three years later, I was sitting in a guest house in Tbilisi in the Republic of Georgia, which is just a little bit south of Russia. And I had been shooting on assignment for CARE International, and I spent the day with many children like these kids in that area. And anytime I do that, at the end of the day, um, I cry a lot. Um, I cry not because I feel sorry for anybody. I cry because I feel um, incredibly overwhelmed by the wealth that they have and what they have shared with me. And so I was crying that night and thinking about the day and, you know, wondering to myself, you know, what in the, what in the world am I doing? Who am I to be traveling to these places, to be with these incredible people, to share their story for them? Who am I as a photographer? What am I doing? I am just making the pictures. And a little bit later that night, I got a Facebook message from my friend Sabi. And this is three years later from when I was in Nepal. And she sent this message to my friend Jen and me. And she wrote, hello, two beautiful ladies. I hope you're doing well. Remember when you guys were in poker in Nepal, my hometown, and had taken pictures of a girl who was working in one of the restaurants right beside my house? I'm not sure if you remember her, but I do remember you had taken pictures of her. Well, I just wanted to let you know that we have taken her in our home since two years. And now she's enrolled in one of the English boarding schools in Pokhara, and she's doing well in her studies. So this is what happens when you expose your heart. Now, I say all of this to say you don't have to travel across the world and take pictures of grand subjects. It can be a found heart in a latte. And if I were to tell you that the photographer made this image moments after her best friend declared his true love for her in a cafe, then suddenly this picture has purpose. So think about the fact that your words and your pictures hold incredible power to share some amazing stories. So if we work together with our mobile cameras and social media, and if we look beneath the surface, go beyond your boundaries, the limits that you've set for yourself, reveal what is true, who you are and where you came from, there's incredible value in that, and expose your heart, and last but not least, share the stories with us. Thank you.